Don't move because the people of Nax Vegas are going crazy. Mm -hmm. They're wondering who is this guy who just slipped through our fingers and went and made it. How does it feel, Charles? How does it, does it feel? Well, it feels great, of course, uh, humbling at the same time. I cannot tell you how many times I've just uh, sat in my house and just got into tears and say, you know, how did I get here? Mm. And uh, so it, it really feels great. Uh, you know, people say that money is the root of all evil. It's not. Actually, money answers all things. Mm. And uh, I'm grateful to be in a position where that is not a struggle in my life. And that is why I travel around the world just, uh, you know, giving people hope that, uh, you know, it's good to have money. It sure is up there with oxygen, you know. <laughs> it, it's helpful to be able to make a difference and most importantly, give back. I yeah. think that's uh, one of the secrets that I've learned over the years is just being able to give back. So, Speaking of keep, uh, giving back and also of hope, your social enterprise called Hope 631. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, Hope 631 uh, started a couple of years ago and uh, it was just... Uh, a passion of mine to go right around, you know, different places, uh, mostly dumpsters. And so what we do around the world, we just look for kids that are abandoned uh, around, uh, you know, different dumpster places. And then uh, we just try to put up infrastructure for them so they can start school. So we're doing that in uh, four countries right now. And uh, it's been so far good success. Is Kenya one of them? Yes, it is. Excellent. Where? In Nakuru, as a matter of fact. And it's still it's also called Hope Six Thirty One. Yes, it's called Hope Six Thirty One. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll put up a structure there. And what you provide the the, the, the financial? Uh, back we provide the financial support. Uh, a lot of times, what we try and do is talk to the local government to see if they can be able to give us land. And if they don't, we just buy something around there. The biggest thing for us is we notice that parents who go around dumpsters, they take their kids with them. And so these kids don't get an opportunity to have education. They just spend time with their parents just, you know, picking stuff from the dumpster. And so we said, you know what, why don't we put up a structure right around the school area, I mean, the dumpster area. So while the parents go and do that, the kids can have education, provide them with meals. And of course, most importantly, we start providing education even for the parents so they can get off from the dumpster areas. So yeah. When you first left Kenya, yes. which was what, 13, 14 years ago? Uh, yes, uh, well, no, I guess a little bit more than that. It was 2003. 2003, yeah, 14 years ago. Yeah. Uh, when was the first time you came back? Uh, I came shortly in 2006, uh, but I did not stay for long. That's when I came to transit to go to United States. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and now do you come often? Uh, I've not been able to come often. So when's the last time you're here? Uh, in January. Unfortunately, it was just for two days. Mm -hmm. I came for a quick business trip uh, for just two days, and then I went back. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, would you want to eventually settle back home, or is America your home? Uh, well, actually, nowadays I consider myself a global citizen, so I just uh, you know, uh, buy properties in different places and then just... Uh, uh, be able to visit and I think that's really everyone's dream is just being a, a global citizen there's so much to life than just being uh, stuck in one place but I'll tell you what for the last five six years I've had so much passion about Kenya it's unbelievable we're gonna be frequenting here a lot and of course uh, settle here at some point when I can't move anymore mm. <laughs> yes you're not married no I'm not why not <laughs> how old are you Charles well, I'm 34. Oosh. Jealous. Pesa. I'm <laughs> <Dege. laughs> At 34. At 34. Yes. <sighs> no married. Hey. Kuna watu wana shika chilinge elif miyamoja na ungesa bibi. Wanakula na bibi yote wana malisi. Think, Charles. Did you think growing up in, what was it, Rondo? Rondo. No, Rondo. 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 Mm. Did you ever think you'd be where you are today? Well, I'd be lying to say that I did not think I would be where I am right now, but at the same time, it was not as clear to me. It was very fuzzy, but like I said earlier, I had a dream and I knew there was more to life. Now, somebody who helped me instill that big part of that was my mom. She constantly always reminded us that, you know, don't let anyone's definition of you determine who, who you're going to be the rest of your life. And so she believed in us even when she had nothing. She constantly spoke those positive words of affirmation. So we just grew up thinking that, hey, you know, uh, we're great. Now, 
of course I was a troublemaker. I've always done everything opposite from everyone, you know. <laughs> so uh, I knew there was something different about me, unique. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nasukia. Just Nasukia. Go out there and make it. Do it. Mm. Do it, and don't let anyone discourage you. Yes. Huh? It is either one day or day one. <laughs> <laughs> But Charles, at the end of the day, people may be listening to you for the first time and saying, you know, he's saying this because he made it. We're struggling. And you know, a lot of Kenyans are struggling just to make ends meet, just to buy unga for the day. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? You know, because, you know, it wasn't easy for you, but w if, when they're listening to you, they're saying, this guy... I'm just talking because I'm going to make it. Exactly. <laughs> what do you tell them? You're lucky. Well, first of all, I don't think even luck has anything to do with anything. I think sometimes, you know, I call it the rule of fast. What's the first step that you're willing to take? No matter where you are in life, even if you don't have money for Unga, you know, because nobody right now talks about my story with the four cleaning jobs, uh, sleeping only two hours, you know, going to United States and doing security job that I end up getting fired uh, just because, you know, I was making pennies and they caught me sleeping at the job. Nobody wants to talk about that. It just sounds like, yeah, you made it. That's why you're saying that. Uh, but the reality is if you take the first step, for example, some of you have been talking about, man, I'm going to start a business one day. Uh, what's the name of your business? I've never thought about it. Well, how about you take the first step? Just get the name of the business. Go get it registered. Take the next step. Take the next step. Eventually, you'll notice that doors begin to open. And I've come to find this in life, that actually, you know, people say, you know, uh, I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. You just have to take the first step. And uh, so for someone who's out there that is selling Onga, don't give up, you know, uh, Start, here's a funny thing, mm. start being excellent with that which has been started, uh, which has been trusted to you. Atakama knows are tomatoes on the road, right? How about to kwetune your excellent customer service na attitude? The reason a lot of people don't make it in life, and I say this all the time, there's a story you have told yourself, and you have believed that story. And as long as you believe that story, you're not going to make it. You have to change the story that you're s telling yourself. Because there's, whenever you tell yourself a story, you've put limiting factors in your mind. And if you can break those limiting factors, then you can start seeing the doors begin to open in your life. So there's a story you've told yourself. on the road. There's a story you've told yourself. This is my destiny. This is where I'm going to be. No. What if you change and say, you know, one of these days I'm going to be a supplier. You know, one of these days I'm going to be a distributor. One of these days I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. And constantly do that guys let me tell you it works it works i have seen it work in my life just because i changed the story that i was telling myself yeah you know you've read a, lo a lot of motivation books you were talking about miles the late great miles monroe you're going to do the same thing you're going to write books you, because you mentor people you get speeches and talks you plan to write books? yes actually i have a new book coming out uh in july it's called unlimited possible oh don't be so shy man plug it here i mean what, what do you do uh, we have a new book coming out uh in july called unlimited possibilities the way to get it go to leadmybusiness.com uh that's the site you can go leadmybusiness.com and uh, we're going to be launching the book in july hmm. wow. and it's called unlimited unlimited possibilities charles kinodia